Okay, so to understand O of n squared, we're going to need to take a function into consideration. And the function will look something like this. So what this function is doing is it's going to take in a number n, and it's going to iterate through this for loop, starting with the number 0 all the way up until the number n. And for every iteration of this top for loop, we're also going to loop through this uh, nested for loop. And this nested for loop is doing the exact same thing that this for loop is doing. It's iterating through every number starting with zero up until the number n. And within this nested for loop, we're console logging the coordinates for a cell within a matrix. But to make things clear, instead of illustrating a console log of the index i and j, I'm just going to draw a square where these coordinates should be for every iteration of this nested for loop. So if it sounds confusing, just try to bear with me. I promise it'll become clear. Okay, so let's say for example that we call the square function with the number four. So that means that we're going to iterate through this top for loop starting with z starting from zero, and then we're going to iterate all the way up until i is no longer less than four. Once i becomes equal to four, then we will stop the iteration. And then that's only for this top for loop. For each iteration of this actual for loop, then we're gonna loop through the entirety of this nested for loop and do this console log. And instead of logging the coordinates, like I said, we'll draw a square where the coordinates would be so you guys could visualize this better. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the first iteration, i is going to equal zero, and then we move on into this nested for loop, and then we're going to iterate through the entirety of this nested for loop. So right now, i and j are zero. So i and j are both zero. So we're currently at the first iteration of this for loop and the first iteration of this for loop, and we'll draw a square. And then we move up one iteration of this for loop. So j becomes one, and we'll draw another square. And then j becomes 2, and we'll draw another square. And then j becomes 3, and we'll draw another square. And now j is 4. And since j is 4, that means that j is no longer less than n, because n is 4. And j is 4, and n is 4, so j and n are now equal. So we'll no longer iterate through this for loop. So now we go back up to this for loop. And now i is equal to 1. So i is equal to 1, and j is equal to 0. So we'll draw a square. And then i is equal to 1, is, and j is equal to 1, so we'll draw a square. And then i is equal to 1, and j is equal to 2, so we'll draw a square. And i is equal to 1, and j is equal to 3, and we'll draw a square. And now back to this top for loop again, because j and n are now equal, we're back up to this top for loop again. Now i is equal to 2, so i is equal to 2, and j is equal to 0, so we'll draw a square. And then i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 1, so we'll draw a square. And i is equal to 2, and j is equal to 2, so we'll draw a square. And i is equal to 2, and j is equal to 3, so we'll draw a square. And then, now j is equal to 4, which is our n, so we'll no longer iterate through this nested for loop. And we move back up to the top of this for loop. Now, i is equal to 3. i is equal to 3 at this point, and j is equal to 0 again. So we'll draw a square. i is equal to 3, and j is equal to 1. So we'll draw a square. j is equal to 2, j is equal to 3, and then j is equal to 4, so we no longer iterate through this nested for loop. And at this point, our i is now equal to 4, and our n is also equal to 4. And we only iterate through this top for loop as long as our i is less than n, but our i is now equal to our n. So now, we stop iterating through this top for loop. And what we're left with is this matrix here. And the reason why I said that these are coordinates for cells within a matrix is because this here is a matrix. And these are rows. And these are columns. So we can look at i as being our column and then we can look at j as being our row. So for each iteration, 0, 1, 2, 3 of our column, we also have an iteration for our row, 0, 1, 2, 3. So coordinates being 0 and 0 were the coordinates for this square. And then 0 and 1 were the coordinates for this square. And 0 and 2 were the coordinates for this square. And so on and so forth. So what does all this have to do with O of n squared? Well, 
Hey, just one quick interruption. If you are finding this video helpful or it's bringing you to some type of understanding, please take the time to like and subscribe. If we think about it, this is a square matrix. That is, each side will be of the same length. And by length, I mean one, two, three, four. This is the length four. And one, two, three, four. And this is of length four. And to find the area of a square, we just need to multiply the length of one side by itself because every side of a square is of the same length. So if, it, if this were a rectangle, we would multiply the, the width times the height. But for a square, we can just multiply it by itself because the width and the height will be the same length. So to get the area of this square, we're just going to multiply four times four. Four times four. And that's going to equal the number of cells within this matrix, which also happens to be the number of times that we have to perform this code, which is four times four is 16. And four times four is the same thing as four square. So O of N square, our N is actually four. And that is why typically functions with nested for loops, like a for loop and a for loop nested within it, like this function, is considered O of N square. I hope that makes sense.